What's up everyone and welcome to Firewatch. This is a game from 2016 and I have played it a couple of times, I really enjoy it. And um, yeah, I have always wanted to do a let's play on this channel. I have tried to do it back in the day, I believe it was 2018, a long time ago. It didn't really work out anyways. So yeah, this is like an adventure mystery uh, type of game, first person too. And it has a really good story as well. Um, so yeah, you, you'll you see once we start playing it. So let's go ahead, let's click on new game. And hopefully everything sounds great to you. Uh, so yeah, empty game. And it's starting. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Harry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. Alright, so. Uh, we can choose what we are going to say. So, what's your, you know, major? Or you, you're pretty. I'm going with that. You're pretty. She says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter. And one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Alright, that that was pretty quick. Oh, here we are. The elevator. So, uh, left mouse button to use objects. Or pick them up. Alright, we got here our backpack. I'm pretty sure it will be very useful in the near future. Did I say would be? I meant to say will be. Anyways. This is our big red truck, and we have to load our gear over here. There we go. I think we are good to go. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Alright, so I'm going with the beagle. Beagle? Whatever it is. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk about on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart. Or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. Honestly, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, you say she's absolutely right. Right, I guess we have arrived at our destination. Not really. Yeah, we, we actually have to make our way to the Firewatch Tower. So we have our bag with us, it seems. Here we go. So thoroughfare trailhead. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Warning: 
Thoroughfare Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Alright. And you're in their country. Learn to live with bears. Oh! Bear country over here. <laughs> there is also a map uh, for the Two Forks region. So we have here an overview and we are going to visit each one of these areas at some point during the game. It will be amazing. So yeah. Let's go ahead, let's enter uh, this place here and let's keep moving, we have a long way to go to the watchtower. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is 4 hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad or you ignore her. I'll choose this one. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold onto a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. All right. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Alright, so we can A. Pose and flex like he man, which by the way I have never watched it. Or we can frolic <laughs> like a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, I think I'm going to pose and flex like he man. <laughs> You look awesome. Of course I do. Like, there's no other way. Right, here we go. Jumping down this edge over here. This looks dangerous. All of these branches. Alright, anyways. It's almost night time. It's dusk. We can see the birds flying around. This is so beautiful. Like, the atmosphere of this game is amazing. Alright, two forks, fire lookout. Eight miles. So we are still quite a long way uh, from the firewatch. Alright, space bar to climb over. Look at that, such a beautiful sunset. 1982, during the summers you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. B B F. <laughs> the dog! Julie yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away or you beat his goddamn face in. Yeah, let's not get violent. Let's not escalate anything. So yeah, I'm going to choose you scare him away. Like, I don't want to get stabbed or Julia. <laughs> or the dog. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered the job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Alright, so we can convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. Like, I'll be honest, I would prefer if she would stay with me. Um, but uh, this is like a really good job. It's a great job. Um, and she actually wants to move to get the job. So maybe it is not fair if I hold her back. So I will agree if she commutes back and forth. Even though I'm pretty sure it will be pretty difficult. Uh, 2,000 miles away, yeah. You ask her if she will commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that will be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. 
you tell her not to pass it up, if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Alright. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it? Or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it? Yeah, uh, let's definitely make some macaroni and drink some wine and just forget about it. Like, she had an episode, let's be honest. Um, yeah, I'm going to choose... Um, the former. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Yes, um, I think choosing to speak to someone was the correct decision. Uh, yeah, this is awful. So... Yeah, I'm guessing we are camping somewhere in the middle of the forest um, because it's already night time. We have here our little journal. Let's go check it out. I have to censor that. I think I've seen enough. Thank you very much, Henry. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Things are getting worse by the year. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. She suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with 24-hour care. A home. It sits with you for a couple months. Alright, this is a pretty difficult decision to make. So we can either decide to move her into a full-time care facility or uh, you are determined to take care of her by yourself like yeah I would prefer if she can stay with us I know it would be really hard to take care of her in her condition uh, but yeah let's choose this one Alright, so I guess this is the next day, over here. Let's keep going. We can actually run by pressing, well, W and R. This is such a really nice looking forest over here. Very peaceful. Oh, let's be careful so we don't slip and fall. Oh, check it out, there's a moose over there. I guess we scared it away. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. What? <laughs> you trust that she sleeps like a rock. 
yeah, I don't think putting a chair on the bedroom door to <laughs> trap her inside is a good idea. Like, what if like a fire starts in the bedroom and she cannot get out? That would be absolutely terrifying. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to trust her that she sleeps like a rock. Like, I think that is the normal thing to do, right? Like, we are not going to trap our own wife in a bedroom. Like, come on now. <laughs> you go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Saint. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Chayla, the bartender, everything. It's a huge way off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you will visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Alright, so it seems like Julia uh, is now living with her parents in Australia. Enter the lookout tower. Alright, so we have finally arrived at our destination. This is a pretty big tower. Look at this. We are all by ourselves. Well, let's go ahead. Let's go up. We even have the full moon over there on the horizon. It is really beautiful. We are surrounded by mountains and a very nice looking forest. There's a lot of stars as well. Alright, let's go ahead, let's enter the tower. We have to turn on the power. There we go. Easy enough. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Oh. Hello? Alright, so, um, let's see. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. <laughs> Alright, so that is Delilah. Um, let's see... Nobody back home can stand you. Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. There we go. So, yeah, they won. And the, the interactions between Harry and Delilah Hi, are Harry. pretty funny. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Check it out. We have here a photo of ourselves and Julia. Really nice. All right, well, let's go ahead. Let's answer the radio. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. 
There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yes. It's this thing over here. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Um, west? Those fucking fireworks? Oh, yes, I see them. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Alright, so... Like, kick the shit out of them sort of straight? No, 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 no. Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. That's pretty convenient. <laughs> convenient. That's one word for it. All right, so check out this. We have here so much stuff. Well, not really. This is just the essentials to live in the Firewatch Tower. There is lots of books over here. This one is called Dead Strikes at Two by Richard Sturgeon. Alright, interesting. There's a, another one called The Patriots by Donald Anderson. Let's see, it begins and ends deep in Red Russia, where they sent him to spy, where they... I cannot read that. Uh, something came to kill and where they learned that he wasn't the patriot that they hoped oh my goodness is that a drama all right and this one is the birds of wyoming by george sinclair all right i guess we can read that some other time anyways we have to go ahead and stop whoever that is so let's pick up our bag and let's go ahead and make our way down to to that area. Man, have I already said that this game looks beautiful? It really does. <laughs> Alright. Let's go. No time to waste. Alright, so aim to read the map. This is really cool. Now there is no way for me to get lost. So we have to make our way to cache 306 so we can pick up a rope. And then we are going to get to Lake Trail and down to Jonesy Lake. Which is where they are throwing the fireworks. Alright. Alright, well. Let's do that. Jonesy Lake. 0 0.7 miles to the west. Let's go. Well, check it out. Oh wait, that is just a leaf. <laughs> There's actually like butterflies that we can see flying around. It's pretty cool. Righty so. Yes, I do remember space to climb over fallen trees. Just like that one. We should be arriving at the spot where we can get our rope. There we go. Found it. I found the supply box. Great. <laughs> Great. So are there a lot of these out in the woods? Yeah, we got them all over the Shoshone. They saved us a lot of back and forth from the trailhead. Don't take all the good stuff. Yeah, all right. I'll try. What's the code again? <laughs> I don't need to ask. I do remember. It's one, two, three, four. All right, well. Let's put the code in. There we go. And there we go. We opened it. I tracked down that rope. It was right where you said. Great. So you should be set to get down to the lake. Deal with whoever is setting off fireworks. Alright. 
Check it out, there is a granola bar over here. People just stuff these things with old food? That's how you get bears. Those boxes are bear proof. I wouldn't worry about it. And we can actually eat it. <laughs> Alright, why not? What could go wrong? There's a pine cone. We don't need that for anything. It actually got stuck over there. <laughs> and a note. Hey, I found a note to a guy named Ron from some guy Dave. That's probably Dave Gaskell. He's completely nuts. Is that right? Harmless, but yeah. One of those, you know, fall off the grid and eat ants for a week type. Totally fucking cuckoo. Which is kind of what the job attracts. Wait, I'm actually going to read it. Alright, 7786. Ron. Hey man, guy couldn't take it so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked, the one that I just ate, <laughs> hiking into the park, but let's get effed when I'm back. Dave. Alright, we can actually keep this note if we want to read it later for some reason. <laughs> and uh, let's actually go ahead and copy this information. Why not? <laughs> there we go. So now... Um, yes, if I... Click over there, we can check out the notes and documents. So we currently just have this one. Alright, I think we have everything from here. So let's keep going. Alright, so let me check the map. Either way will get us to the same place. So yeah, oh, actually it said on that map that there is a great view over there on the right. So let's actually go over there uh, to check out the view should be right over here let's see let's see yes I actually I actually can hear them throwing the fireworks alright it's over here yep there it is this view let's see this vista is incredible there really is a whole lot of nothing out here huh what there's lots of incredible stuff here this vista is incredible. <laughs> Which one? Uh, down the hill from my tower. There's a canyon and then the rest of... Well, everything. Yeah, you should see what I'm looking at. An eagle has been hovering over this gorge for the past hour. <laughs> and maybe if you're good, you can come by and see it at the end of the summer. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And check it out, we can even see Delilah's lookout tower from over here. That's where she is. It's pretty cool. So, anyways, let's keep going before they burn the first down with all of those fireworks. I have no idea how they haven't run out of fireworks yet. Hey, there's a tree out here that's been ripped to hell. And? Don't you think that's, you know, like, uh, disconcerting? Henry, there are 500 pound grizzly bears out here. They sharpen their claws on trees. We don't have grizzlies in Colorado. People killed them a long time ago. Well, in the thoroughfare, they hunt people, they kill people, they bury their bodies, and then come back weeks later to eat them because they prefer rotten meat. People just disappear. Don't you think that's disconcerting? No, Henry, that's life. Christ, lady. I think that is disconcerting. And pretty scary. Right, so... Oh, check it out. We can even see birds flying around. I bet they are scared because of the fireworks. Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. Alright, so we can actually give it a name. <laughs> um... Yeah, well, I'd go with Widowmaker. Come on, it's really not that bad. It's a 50-foot cliff made of rocks that look like knives. They just look like knives, okay? Plus, there's already a Widowmaker on the backside of Carter Mountain. It would be confusing. <laughs> oh my god. It's pretty funny. Well, I guess we have to get down there. Nothing bad can happen. Right? <laughs> Famous last words. Let's go! One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, fall! <laughs> I knew this would happen. 
Oh my god. I hope we didn't break our back. This was quite the fall, actually. Look at that. Super steep. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, Widowmaker got the best of me. What exactly happened? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Let's see, let me check the map real quickly. Alright, we are actually going the right direction. So... Alright, over there. That is where we need to go. Man, this is beautiful. We are right now in a meadow. Hell of a nice camping spot. I agree. These cliffs down here are something. Hey, I'm not sure where to look. Let's say it's a nice camping spot. It is spot. a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. Oh, check it out. There's a campfire over there. And lots of beer cans. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. Red Eagle brewed in Wyoming. We can actually clean up all of this mess. So let's be a good person and let's clean up. What do you know? People with shitty manners drink shitty beer. What? You don't like a cold musqua light on a hot day? No, no, I do. But then again, I didn't say my manners were any good. Better than these fucking litter bugs, though, that's for sure. They are probably drunk with these many beers. Who drinks all of this? <laughs> Alright. Let's get every single one of them. There we go. And uh, those are their backpacks, I bet. Like, who else could they be? <laughs> they left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. <laughs> You're right. Oh, look, they decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? Right. We better stomp out the fire, or else something might catch on fire. Whiskey. I left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. Irish. Top of the morning to ya. I'm actually going to save this for later. Why not? <laughs> Alright, so there's more beer cans over here. Come on now. Oh, and I found their fireworks. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Alright. Magic missile. <laughs> there we go. Maybe you can use them later on. We cannot. Oh, check it out! Here's the, the butterflies that I mentioned before. This is so awesome. Alright. Um, yeah, I believe... Oh! There's some clothes over here. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Uh, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. Alright. Uh-oh. What's that? I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Alright. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why, because you're 12? <laughs> no. Um, let's keep going. There's a... Ooh. Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? Come on, I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's, you know... Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. 
All right, well, I guess I found them. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh, boy. Enjoy dealing with that. Um, can you please stop drawing fireworks? They are actually playing with them over there, in the middle of the lake. <laughs> These two are crazy. They even have their own boombox over here playing music. I know you're lighting fireworks. Quit the fireworks stuff or else. Please cool it with the fireworks, okay? I want to make this fun, so let's say this one. Don't pull any more shit or you're fucked, alright? Don't threaten us. Yeah, who the hell are you, creep? Uh, he's just one of those lonely guys who likes to boss people around. Why do guys think it's alright to just stare at girls? What? You just call me a creep. I'm actually offended by that. Whoa, hey, put that down! Seriously, it was expensive! Fucking cool it with the fireworks! Please just put it down! We won't light anymore! This guy's creepy, Chelsea. <laughs> you probably have a tiny dick! Chelsea! Alright! That's it! That's it! You know what? Take this! Light another firework and it won't be your stereo Iraq. Oh, fuck you, psycho! Yeah, fuck you! You'll fucking pay for this. You can't just harass girls in the woods. Let's get out of here. That's what you get. Alright, maybe that wasn't the best idea I, I had, okay? but anyways. It went fine. It went fine. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. Alright, well, I guess it's time to get back. Uh, hey, there's a trail to Two Forks Tower down here near the lake. Yeah, that's your tower. So I should go this way. Well, you're not climbing back up that slide. Alrighty. Well, it's quite a beautiful lake. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe we actually did that. <laughs> we threw their boombox into the lake. Like, they are, like, they deserved it, come on. The things that they were saying, no. There's a creek over here that gets to the lake. Alright. So, um, we cannot go the way we came from because our rope snapped so we now have to get back to the two forks tower through this other path it's pretty cool all right so let's keep on going can i speak with delilah now i don't think so so oh. i have a bit of a confession to make hmm all right what is it um, look, I was, I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. It's not a big deal. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that sort of a thing to, uh, to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. <laughs> so she was actually drunk last night when she welcomed us to the job. <laughs> like the Lila is a box of surprises. Right, so that is a thunderstorm approaching. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning. It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and try not to get hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not gonna strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide, would you believe? Oh, that is awful. And we just found the cave over here. And another supply cache. 
Alright, so if I remember correctly, the code was 1, 2, 3, 4. What goodies are we going to get from this one? Alright, first of all, let me copy the information to my map. Alright, so we have here a horn. This is a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. Alright, it doesn't want to get back into the box. Alright, there we go. Flashlight. I found a flashlight. There's one in there? Great. Well, the sun's gonna go down soon, so if the batteries still work, you're in luck. It does work. Alright, so F to toggle flashlight. Oh, this is useful. We are literally going inside of a cave. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon. Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. God damn it! <laughs> Hello! Oh! This cave is gated off. It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so maybe its mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, sorry, Hank. Huh. Open! Let me in! <laughs> oh! This just fell off. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Alright, well, we better hurry back before we actually get struck by lightning. Or a uh, rock falls on top of us. <laughs> Who knows? Alright, so good thing we got the flashlight. It's night time. Oh, hello there. There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's... it's... it's madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's also kind of creepy. Come on. Like, the guy was standing there with a the flashlight looking at us, didn't say anything. Run away. <laughs> Seems kind of sketchy. I don't know. Just saying. Be careful, Harry. You don't want to fall again. The hell we go? What kind of mysteries are we going to find in this forest? Alright, so the guy was standing right here. We were right down below. So he probably is up here somewhere. I think we are very close to the lookout tower. Alright, so we are coming back that way. We visited cave number 452 <laughs> and yeah, we are getting close to our lookout tower. Let's go, Harry. There it is. Right, I think we are... we did uh, enough exercise for one day. We are climbing a lot of steep walls over here righty let's keep going 
Oh my goodness, another wall for us to climb. <laughs> well, let's go. There it is. Look at all of those stars, so beautiful. Oh, here's a sign. Ouch. <laughs> Nothing goes right with Harry, does it? Uh, well, that trail isn't closed anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I took care of the black path. Um, it was backbreaking, but, you know, anything for the service. Well, thank you. Anytime. It was my pleasure. Alright, so, Toro Fair for a lookout. Alright, so this is where we are. Um, so it's, uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And, uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. I did not ask. Anyways, check this out. Wooden sign. I don't think there's any fictional character I hate more than Forrest Burns. Henry, as an employee of the Forest Service, that is treason. Yeah, well, he really freaked me out as a kid. He inspired me to spend the bulk of my 30s keeping the wilderness safe. A shrink would have a field day with you. Uh, thanks, Mom. Um, what should we say? What kind of name is Forrest Burns anyway? Well, that would be a pun, Hank. I went to junior high with a guy named Royal Butts. Royal? Butts. <laughs> I didn't think anyone had been named Royal since the 1850s. Well, Royal's mom, Flo, was a bit of a trendsetter. Flo Butts? Oh man, that's even worse. Yeah, well, it's still better than Forrest Burns. I actually disagree with that. <laughs> what kind of name is Royal Butts? <laughs> what? Oh my god. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... What about my hairdryer? Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. <laughs> like, the interaction between both of them is absolutely gold. Generic XP 3000. That's an interesting name. I like the outhouse in a rustic, I'm roughing it sort of way. Yeah, it's a little privacy among the seemingly endless expanse of, well, privacy. I like it all the same. Let's check it out. Baseball? Wait, we could actually talk about the baseball, couldn't we? Oh my god, what's happening? Anyways, well. Is it signed by any famous baseball players? That seem like it. You go inside of the toilet. Pick it up. Oh, there we go. Hole in one. Forced burns. You also go inside of the toilet. And you stay there. Oh my god, that is creepy. Alright, uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> so, let's go inside of our lookout tower and... Now check it out, we have here some c cinder blocks. I don't think we need that for anything. Oh! What happened to my typewriter? Uh... What can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell... You should get inside. Fuck me. Alright. Me and this typewriter will take care of whoever got inside of my fire lookout. It is probably that creepy guy from before. Could only, right? Uh, so, yeah, there's a Lila over there. Can we talk? No. Alright. Alright. Is anyone here? It's empty. Someone broke in. Hey, what? It just, they wrecked the place, threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker! Holy shit. Um, 
I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. Well, at least my picture is still there, intact. <laughs> they literally trashed everything over here. Oh my god. Alright, um... Well... Okay, I put in a call. Well, what can they do about it? Will they catch whoever did it? This is the Forest Service, Henry. They're not exactly Hawaii Five-O. Do you have any idea who would have done this? Actually, yes. Oh, wait. It could have been the girl at the lake, right? But I'm going to say the guy at the canyon. I don't know. I don't know. Who's out here? I mean, I don't know either. I've never had a lookout be a target for violence. Great. I, I can't believe someone would do this. I mean, I worry about bears and fires and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about who knows what out there. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm gonna call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since, I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. I need you to feel safe out here. Yes, I feel totally safe, Delilah. Just point me to the Forest Service weapons cache and I'll feel safer than the Pope in his little car. Yeah, uh, someone made the choice years ago that leaving people with infinite amounts of alone time and a gun was kind of a bad idea. Brilliant. I have bleach. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Alright. Well, day two. Wake up. Wake up! I'm awake. I'm awake. What's your problem? Our problem. Sorry, our problem. That storm knocked out the phone line I used to talk to the service, which means we're cut off. I tried radioing out, and that's not working either. Um, can I go fix I don't it? I really know why that would be the case. Can I go fix it? Well, you probably can't, but what you can do is hike out to where the wire runs through your area and report back if it's down. Then I can track down a ranger to get someone on it. Okay, I can do that. Where is it? Remember that cave you hiked through yesterday? Yeah, of course. So, you're gonna want to go back there, go through it, and keep going straight to the north when you come out. Will do. Thanks, Hank. It's Henry. What, you don't like Hank? Yeah, I don't like Hank. But thanks rhymes with Hank. No, it doesn't. Okay, all right. All right, everybody. So I guess we are going to end off day one over here, and uh, we are going to explore day number two on the next episode. So this game is super fun. I love the interaction between Harry and Delilah. Like there, it's a match made in heaven. Well. Um, yeah, I like Julia too. Anyways, uh, so yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, everyone.